afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. So I need some audience participation. I want to start off by asking how many of you had a dream when you were a child? Show of hands. So most of us, right? We had a dream. Did we live up to it? Give me a show. No. Some of us did. Not too many. What happened? Do you know what happened along the way? What happened? Why didn't you meet your dream? Yeah. That was enough, right? Anyone else? Can anyone else tell me why they didn't live up to their dream? How about you, sir? Actually, you know what? Let me ask one of the ladies. How about you? Did you? You lived yours? Excellent. So, so and we got to celebrate that, right? So what often happens is that somewhere along the way, somebody tells us that we can't. Sometimes it's our parents, sometimes it's teachers, sometimes it's friends. And they often tell us that we can't because it's in our best interest. It's going to be too hard. We're not going to be able to do it. We're not going to be successful. And along the way, we start believing them. And we start carrying their baggage. We start carrying their burdens. And we take our dreams and we pack it up into little boxes and we hide it away in the closet. And I want to say to you, maybe it's time you go back into that closet, find your dream, and try to make it real. But the first thing you got to do is you got to let go. You got to let go of all the stuff that you've been carrying. You got to let go of all the stuff they told you you couldn't do or it was too hard to do. Because if you don't let go of it, it means that every day you get up, you pick up somebody else's garbage, you pack it on your back, and you walk out of the door with it. And it slows you down. It weighs you down. It stops you from living that dream. The other thing that I think it's so important for us to learn how to do is to learn how to love. How many of our parents actually taught us how to love ourselves? Did they tell us about how beautiful we were? Did they tell us about how brilliant we were? Did they tell us what it feels like to be loved? Or did they tell us, I put a roof over your head, what more do you need? Right? <laughs> So we never actually find out what it means to love ourselves. And it means we bump into walls, we bump into the wrong people, we bump into the wrong circumstances that also stops us from loving ourselves. But in order to make the dreams that we had real, we have to learn to love ourselves. And that means all the warts, all the twists, all the turns, um, this summer, I had to come to grips with the fact that boobs grow under your armpits when you get old. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> so, you know, you raise your arm up and you see this thing show up and you're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> right? <laughs> but I had to learn to love the, these new things that came to hang out with me. But I have to tell you, <laughs> I've been trying to get them to either one, start paying rent, or two, move the hell out. All right? <laughs> uh, but, but that self-love is so important. And it doesn't matter what we look like, what we feel like, who we are, what our race is, our, our size is, our gender identity is, our sexual orientation. We gotta love ourselves because if we don't do it, no one's going to do it for us. And if we don't do it, 
we also tell the world that we're not worthy of being loved because people are going to treat you based on how you teach them to treat you. So that love piece is very, very important. The third thing you got to look at, and I think this is the hardest one, is honesty. When you got to get up every morning, look yourself in the mirror, and be honest with yourself. Honest about the things that you did well. Honest about how fabulous you are. Honest about how absolutely phenomenal you are but also honest about the things that you need to develop. The other piece of honesty is, who the heck do we need to get rid of? We all have folks in our lives that we keep around, whether it's friends, whether it's interactions with coworkers, whether or not it's partners, and we know that they're toxic. And we know that every moment we spend with them sucks the life out of us. But because we didn't learn how to love ourselves, we hang on to them. Because it's in that toxicity that we get a sense of safety. We all have those old shoes that they're ugly and they're beat up, but they're so comfortable. We don't want to get rid of them. And that's some of our relationships. They're not healthy, they're not good for us, but we're hanging in there. So that's also part of the letting go. In order to let go, you gotta love and you gotta be honest. And you gotta figure out who needs to go. But you also gotta figure out what needs to go in you. Right, because that's a big part of the process. So when you gotta stop and look at yourself and say, you know what? Maybe I'm not the nicest person in the world. I might need to work on that. Are you willing to do that work? Because it's only when you do your self-work that the rest of the world starts to fall in line. The fourth piece, <laughs> I'm hearing the, the choir over here saying amen and hallelujah. <laughs> the fourth thing that you need to do is to dream. And not the little dreams that they tell us that we should dream. Dream big. Dream as though there's no obstacles. I said to a young man recently, if you were to tell me your biggest dream, what would that be? He said, be an assistant professor. Like, that's it? Really? That's an okay dream, but what about being world-renowned professor in some area that everybody gets to know? So not only do they take our dreams away, they stop us from learning how to dream. So we got to go back to learning how to dream. What was that thing you wanted to do? When you open that box, and whether that box is in the closet, whether that box is in your head, what is that dream that you have? And once you start dreaming, you start to plan to make that dream come true. One of my dreams was a cottage. I've been wanting one of those babies for years, 20 years. And every time I go to my friends and I'm like, how about we get, yeah, you know, the kids, the, the. Well, I woke up one morning in April and I said, you know what? I'm getting me a cottage. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So I went out and I bought me a cottage. I don't know how I'm paying for it, so if any of you need a cottage to rent, hook me up, okay? <laughs> um, or rather, I can hook you up. Um, but the reality is that I kept waiting for other people to help me live my dream. I kept waiting for their plans to fall in line so that I could make my plans. And the longer I waited, the worse it became. Because I'm quite certain what I paid for it now, if I'd gotten it 20 years ago, I would have finished paying for it already, right? So it's my way of saying to you, don't wait for other people to help you get your dream going. Don't wait for them to get you in the groove. 
you've got to find that moment. You've got to wake up one day and say, today is my day. And whatever is that thing, whatever is that dream, you got to go after it. The last thing I think is so important is the whole notion of belief. I always say to people, I'm not a religious person. I don't sit comfortably with religion, organized religion. But I think it's so important to believe not just in yourself and your dreams, but in something bigger than you. Whether it's God, whether it's worshiping the waves, whether it's worshiping the skies, you have to find something that grounds you. And you can't let other people choose it for you again. It's got to be, what is the thing that makes me keep going when I'm having a bad day? What is that thing that's going to make me want to get up out of bed every single day and keep going? Now, let me be honest. You're going to have bad days. Actually, you're going to have bad weeks. You might even have a couple of bad months. But what is that thing that's going to keep you going? It's your dream. And it's the plans that you put in place for your dreams. So I will ask anyone, anyone in the audience, can you tell me what was one dream that you had when you were a kid? This gentleman said he wanted to be a pilot. The lady over here said she lived her dream. Is there anyone? Of, yes, ma'am. You wanted to be a police officer? Is it still something that you wanted to do? Hmm. So perhaps you could become a nurse in a correctional facility. So you get to, we need to chat. <laughs> um, so folks, I'll say to you as well, don't think you have to, to do the path alone. Don't let anyone dictate the path. Don't let anyone determine the path. But don't be afraid to ask others to help you to figure out the path. Because somebody's been there before. Somebody has traveled that path before. You don't have to go through the brushes and build a new road. But in the event that you do, you got to know what you had to unpack before you got on the journey, so the letting go. You got to know um, that you love yourself. So in those moments that things get difficult, you're going to keep going. You got to remember how to dream because it's the dream that's going to allow you to go through the brushes and through the path to get to the end. And finally, what's the last thing you got to do? Anyone remember? That was one of the first ones. You got to believe in something bigger than you. Because in those moments, when you're going through that path and it gets scary and it gets uncomfortable, you're going to have to find something to believe in, to hold on to, to get you through. So ladies and gentlemen, as you leave here today, I ask of all of you, go back into the closet, into that little part of your brain, find your dream, pick it up, dust it off, and start pursuing it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much.